Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Abel Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. I'm your host, Jimmy Graham, your BK, Abel Shepard 51 What's up, samesies? What? He's leaving the jacket on because we wore the exact same shirt. So, uh, yeah, you got the memo, blue shirt day? Yeah, so if I start sweating <laughs> a little is, later on. In what the, is today, blue shirt Tuesday? Blue shirt Tuesday. Yep, yeah, taco, tu- taco Tuesday. Think tacos, think blue shirt. Oh, blue mm. jeans, huh? Really? Blue jeans, weird. Mm. I got boots on, though. You got, you got shoes, blue shoes. Welcome, brother. Good to see you again. Good seeing you, man. Let's do this. Should we do this one? Let's do it. Let's knock it out. Let's give a shout out to the Sage. Able-nation.org. If you are in charge of your security team, be that church, school, civic, civic group. group, which means a group of people. It's pretty broad. So if you're in charge of security for pretty much anybody and you don't have the budget for it and you could use a little assistance, we've created a 501c3 called Able Nation. That's able-nation.org. Contact the sage, a.k.a. Neil Pinkham, okay. and, uh, and he can help you out. So able-nation.org, there's an easy form to fill out. Get in touch with Neil and see if we can... Uh, be of service. Thank you, brother. Love you. Love you, Sage. All right. This one, um, we're calling this one seven tips for home security. Are you feeling this whole thing? <laughs> the pressure building? It's um, it's odd. It feels like the calm before the storm. I don't yeah. know why I said that the night, two nights ago in the Bible study, but it was just, I, did, I couldn't explain it. It just feels like the calm. Everything's been kind of chill for a minute and everything's going back, like in the wrong direction. Yep. And we don't freak out about that around these parts. We just feel like, you know, such time as this, <clears throat> we've been, um, God's been working on me and Jimmy Graham every single day to be sitting right here, right? So it just, it's starting to feel like that. And I don't know what the storm means. It just means I've been through a lot of silliness. We've been very fortunate to have an amazing community that keeps growing, keeps getting stronger. I don't think that's an accident. So I don't, I don't know that I could explain that in more detail than that. But last night I said, yes, it just feels like the calm before the storm. Um, and I know my job, my job is to take care of one another, you know, from the book of John, love one another, to funnel it down. You're going to refine it to love one another, right? We call it take care of one another because yep. it means the same thing. It's just, what, what does it mean? Love one another. It means take care of one another. <clears throat> so talking with, uh, um, the staff today, and we were talking about that, uh, home security, but we're good to, to revisit. We've touched yep. on it before. But we want to throw this out. We we look at a lot of our posts, like public safety announcements, like PSAs, yeah. and I've written on this and put it out there for free to make your um, your church, your school, civic group, your home more safe. So we wanted to focus on home because this comes up. I think people know this, and then we say it again, and people go, thank you. I've never heard of that, right? So we've got new people coming all the time, yep. and our reach gets bigger. So you ready to dive in? I'm ready. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. What do you think of when I say concentric rings of security? Because you got a little history with this. You just said something. It, well, it makes me smile because I've heard the phrase before. I've seen it put into practice. And, um, you know, to do it at the house is a little bit different yep. when you don't have as much, let's say, human resource. Mm-hmm. But it does not mean that you don't have the ability to plan. I, I don't know, something as simple as putting a thorny bush in front of your ground floor windows, right? Yeah. That would be a, a ring, maybe a deadbolt on a door or two. Yep. That might be another ring. Absolutely. Just trying to buy some time. So those are the things I think of with regards to my house and some rings. Maybe, you know, these days, the last couple of years, some video. So if I'm sitting at the desk on a conference call, is it UPS or is it the boogeyman? That's right. <clears throat> so it's funny you mentioned that with the thorny bush. <laughs> What's up, Septhead? So 86er out in Montana is going to kick out of that. What's up, two foot, six foot, and uh, eyes on the street. We went to, man, we've just got amazing people. You just, I said, man, Nick's on the road. Hey, Nick, what's up, brother? You're driving back to Maine right now. He drives here from Maine. We're in Denver. He drives here from Maine. It's the second time in two months that he's driven out here to test, to to train with us. So he's on his uh, way back to try to beat the storm. So drive safe, brother. Uh, But I said, he's such a great guy. And you go, there's a lot of those around here. And I agree. And we got some people that come in from out of state. So the 86 are up in Montana. What's up, Jay? We went to, I, I, I hit him up. And I said, I'm going to a class called Septet. It's, it's in Las Vegas. It's at the police department. I'm just always looking to grow Jimmy Graham. This was last year, maybe. And he goes, uh, I think my schedule's clear. I might join you. I'm like, you're going to join me for a class, a classroom class on crime prevention through environmental design called Septet? Sure. So he kind of, and it made it awesome because what I'm kind of, and it was cool. I don't want to take anything away from it. 
Um, it's a little more <clears throat> pacifist than I am because once things go bad, they go real bad. I don't agree with everything they say, but I'm there to learn and I'll eat the meat, spit That's up the bones. That's another perspective, another opinion. It's another, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it's the new version of it, meaning they're not talking fire. They're not talking about when things go wrong, they've actually made it worse. And I, I don't want to spit anybody's you know, Kool-Aid or whatever, but I'm just saying I can't not see that. You know, what's seen can't be unseen. And once it goes bad, you're going to be wishing you hadn't done some of those things, like more glass, more of this, whatever. The two foot, six foot means um, vegetation shouldn't be higher than two foot, less than six foot. It lets you see people. It takes away the hiding spots, yeah. right? Eyes on the street, you know, having a perception of more eyes on the street means more glass, means less crime, kind of, until there is, and then it's a bad deal. Like if you've got glass, and a lot of people do decorative rock, <clears throat> kind of jumping ahead, the exact wrong size is one that's very popular. The, the baseball, the baseball softball yeah. size, the one that will break, break through your window. It's not good to do landscaping, right? Pebbles, you know, that's one thing, but the, the perfect size ones to kill you, that's not really good to have handy. Yeah. But anyways, but that's what SEPTED kind of covers. And we're going to go out, I think this year and do the advanced portion. So it's a good, it's good to learn and, and apply always. You know, we say when we stop, stop learning, come dangerous, yep. right? We don't want to be dangerous. <clears throat> so you're right. So back to concentric rings of security. It just means... Um, rings that have that, that's that common center and they just go outboard, right? It's a good way. It's the place that we start when we talk about securing really anything. What are you trying to, when you're talking protective world, what are you trying to protect? So you find, you identify that and then you go outboard and you try to get as much uh, warning, if you will, that you can. Like yeah. the way that I say that is if you can find out that somebody is, when we're talking about home, I would like to know somebody's on my property and there's a problem um, that gives me time to assume a posture, assume a posture to, to, to address that threat. Set it this way. If Rachel Jean's cooking spaghetti and she looks up and there's a dude standing in our house, it's too late. There's too late. no ring there. She's, they're already inside the thing I was trying to protect. We have, we have no perimeter. So <clears throat> one of the hardest, for an example, would be a church. Come one, come all. Jesus loves you. The door's open. There's again. no perimeter, right? That's why it's such a challenge. So what can you do? Be better trained. Have guys, problem solvers handy, and then, and then they've got to figure it out. But it's really the, the, the cards are stacked against them. Just the deal. That's, that's the way it is. Well, I'm glad you brought up the church because I think every environment's different. You and I live in a, a subdivision. Yep. <clears throat> so really until they're down at the bottom of my cul-de-sac, I'm blind. That's right. Now, other people in the program live, uh, let's just pick a number, 40 acres. That's a different perspective. Yeah. You've got a mile-long <clears throat> gravel driveway. You might want to have something on the driveway that trips Yeah. once somebody makes the turn. So. Uh, environment dependent. Yeah. Very and we talk about like getting those eyes out there, you know, to, to, to start the list. If we ID our perimeter, knowing this thing I'm protecting, but man, I'd like to know, get those rings far as you can. Mm -hmm. That can be a neighborhood. That can be a community. That can be Betty that walks her dog every day. And she's like, what's that car doing? Yeah. It's been parked in front of Brian's house for a while. What's up? And she calls you, you know, so it's not just, these are seven things, but there's many, you know, get those rings out as far as you possibly can. And these communities are starting to come together. And I don't know if you've yeah. seen this or not, but I've been invited to these Bible studies where you walk into the garage door and there's a bunch of dudes reading the Bible and they're talking about this and that. And they're just those kind of handy guys that are like, they can handle themselves. And now they know each other. That's a, that's a capability, right? Yep. That's another ring that's further out than your camera reaches. So yep. It's a good deal. Yeah. It reminds me of the back <clears throat> in the day, the neighborhood watch. Yeah, that's Where exactly right. Keep an eye out for each other's stuff. Yeah. yeah, and that should be there. It's back in a big way, actually, you know, within yeah. our community and all that stuff, but it, th that should be there, you know. Um, so seven tips for home security. Let's, let's uh, understanding those rings, let's start from far to near. That's a good way to talk about it, like that warning we talked about in one example. Um, and that would fall into this as well, is the first thing I'm going to mention is have a plan. You know, and even, even before you, the furthest thing out there is like, if you do have a game plan that people know it, is it my kids? We say in an emergency, everybody has a job. Everybody. Yep. Everybody, even my children, if they got to be quiet, if they got to link to me, if they got to stay with mom, if they got to listen, we change the tone of our voice and they respond because we've trained them that way. Not with a fire drill. We do fire drills, fire drills. but not like just because of that. It means, as you know, um, if I say link to me and I'm walking across Cabela's parking lot, they're connected. They're yeah. touching me. And that's not an accident. I'm doing that in just kind of a fun, playful deal, but it's not optional. So they know to stay together. And if the voice, the tone of my, because I'm fun, loving dad, whatever, if I get serious, they are locked on because I've trained them that way. They're not yeah. accidentally like, uh, why do we got to do that? That doesn't happen. If I, you know, raise my voice, that's the deal because it's not normal, right? Yep. So having that plan and making sure they know their part, even with the neighbors, you know, if something's not normal, let me know that's all that doesn't happen accidentally. There has to be a plan and people must know it. A lot of times when I walk into businesses, I say, and this is the same for your home, but I walk into businesses and I say, they say, where would you like to start? And I go, can I speak to this young lady here? Yes, you can. Ma'am, 
If you heard gunshots or screaming, what would you do? Like, I don't know. Let's start there. There should be a plan and she should know it, right? The, uh, we, we say it this way. The solution will always be a human being. Yep. Always, right? Technology exists to make human beings more capable. So the human beings must know the plan. And now let's go build things up to make that plan more effective, to make those human beings more effective, whether they're using medical, whether they're getting people out, whether they're grabbing a gun and going towards the noise, you, you name it. But if there is a plan and you know your role, you can train to that role. So if I'm in my house, I'm picturing almost multiple plans. So we're talking about the concentric rings to me, which is physical. Yep. Uh, I heard you talk about communication plans, maybe keywords or um, tone. And then what other plan might you have, say, in the household? You've got the physical layout, the communication plan, action. Exactly. Example, um, the fire, fire drill. You've seen that fire drill. So we've got the family emergency plan uh, course that we train here. And families come in and we talk about this stuff. Of having, If the house was on fire and full of smoke, what do the kids do? I don't know. It doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. They need to have the plan, right? So that's one example. Another example might be if I yell for them to stay put or do whatever, they, it can't be the first time. If it's the first time, we can guarantee it's going to be less efficient. Yep. Uh, my daughter is old enough to babysit. When she's babysitting, the doorbell rings or something like that, she says, Dad, somebody's at the door, and then she waits. And she goes, okay. Now, I'm not even in the building, but to somebody ringing the doorbell, it sounds like she's having a conversation with her dad, Yep. right? A lot of home invasions that happen when you see, you can see, just Google this and you'll be able to see it. It's horrible. They knock on the door and they're, they're, their goal is to rob houses that are vacant. There's nobody there, right? So um, um, they don't want to have a confrontation with people, but a lot of people, like my wife, previously before having this conversation, they're like, just be quiet, shh, quiet and they'll go away. Well, not if they're looking to rob your house. That means they're coming yeah. in. Yeah. So then they boot the door down and they didn't plan on running into people, but now they have. It's just a different deal, right? So we have that little drill, and then she immediately calls me because you know my wife and I can go to dinner to dates because we have a you know a babysitter, a babysitter now. Yeah. So she can call me, and I'm probably three blocks downtown Castle Rock, and I can be home in minutes, right? Or I've got my people. I can hit somebody that's two minutes from my house, and they can beat me there, and then go figure it out. Or nine one one, fill in the blank. But um, that's that's kind of that plan. Like if they don't know, you can't expect them to know. What's the rules? Throttle rules. Dad never taught me, right? So you have those conversations before there's an, um, um, a deal. And then every once in a while, test them. You don't have to freak them out or anything, but something like that. We, this is funny. We had a situation where Rachel accidentally hit away on the alarm when it was oh. supposed to be stay and then the motion detectors yep. don't work, but she hit away. They're watching TV. Well, somebody jumps mm-hmm. up and the alarm goes off, right? Now there's police knocking on the door and Becca's got them all huddled up in the, and they did great. And they're calling us. <laughs> We figured it out, but it was a test run, yep. right? And it's like, you know, then we talk about what you did good, what you did bad, but it, it freaked them out. But they did, they stuck together and had their little thing and Christian's hiding, they're peeking outside and the cop's like, hey, because he sees them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get it all figured out. It's not a big deal. So we've got amazing um, law enforcement. Okay, so one's the plan. You have to start with a plan and it's got to be to train your people. Okay, two, cameras, motion detectors. Um, Cameras and motion detectors. Now, motion detectors. These ring doorbells, all that mm-hmm. stuff's great. Again, they're not even into your perimeter. They haven't even breached your perimeter of, of being at the door yet, and you pick up motion. Hey, somebody's on your porch. Hey, we had somebody in this program that their phone went off, and they look at it, and there's a dude with a hoodie on their porch. Oh, boy. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? And the guy just kind of hid. And I was like, hey. And he's yelling at the guy, and the guy's just standing there. I don't know if he's drugged out or what. And he's trying to call his kids, but they're not picking up. They're in the house. And now he calls a neighbor, two minute person, you know, yep. we say two and 10. So your two minute person calls, they start heading over there and the guy bolts, right? But that's the kind of thing, who knows? You know, you just don't know, but at least you saw, because he didn't ring the bell, he just stayed in there, creepy, Oof. right? And that's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. So knowing there's a problem before there's an actual problem standing in front of you, uh, that's a big deal. One thing you can do with your cameras and consider this, uh, you can go and get cameras. Now, I'm not a big fan of the wireless ones. They're, they're easy on the install, but they're less reliable. You yep. go and they're not synced up. It's just, they're on all the time. So the wires, I ran the wires, the guys came out and helped me out. And it was all, but the first thing that we did is I had them do a Google, um, uh, what is like it? A satellite image. Satellite image of my home. Right. And then, and then find out what your cameras, the range of them, 30 degrees, but whatever it ends up being. Yeah. Right. And then impose those. You can do it with a pencil, but you can also do the little, you know, the little, what more what, automated. Yeah. What, what are they called? They're like CAD cam. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. They're little, they're little, uh, um, vectors, almost, 30 yeah. degree blocks. Yeah. 
and then you pop them in there and it shows you exactly yeah. and now no blind spots so just overlap them like I, like i said you can do your pencil and just do like the little so if that thing's like a 50 degree camera or whatever you just put 50 degrees in there and that's where you place them and it's easy because you forget about the little alcove for the air conditioner or whatever so you just make sure you've got coverage because if, if um, people some people learn this in 2020 whether you're a politician whether you're what we've we worked with politicians that have been threatened if there's people outside your house banging on your house and on your property you're gonna want to know where they're at yep you don't want to guess you want to know there's a dude hiding by my air conditioner right now right it's just keep an eye on him he's right there and if they come towards that door you may have to do something or at least get away from that glass door those kind of things so those cameras you can get Liable cameras, slave them right into your TV, connect option three for HDMI three or whatever, and just sit there and watch. We do this quite a, sometimes my kids will be playing and I'm, I'm working in the kitchen or something, making them a sandwich and I, I just bring it on the TV and I can see them out there. I can hear them too, but I can look up and see exactly what they're doing. Mm. The other day I was just playing football with my son and I tackled him in the snow and we go, let's go watch that. <laughs> and we ran in, pulled it up Instantly. and we played it back and it's like, ah, snow's coming up. And then we both got cold and ran in the house, right? Just fun stuff. But now every time you touch it, you get better. Yeah. How do you play back? How do you do all this stuff? it's good to have so the motion detectors that give you a little warning hey something's going on and it's a proximity where people shouldn't be on your porch you look up it's no big deal great but if it is a big deal you know yep and then the cameras uh one to have that reference of where they are right now and then all obviously to catch vandals and things like that what we're we talking about oh parker wanted me to mention you got some stuff the, the freaking amazon thieves man that makes oh, yeah, a the thief pirates, i have yep. Ooh, man i cannot stand a thief that makes me crazy like you don't it's not yours i don't know whose it is you know it's not yours don't yeah. touch it right i'm makes me crazy but if you've got cameras then maybe you can catch them and, and we can you know bring some justice um and, and we get to put those folks in jail where they need to live uh so number three doors and windows so as far as your doors and windows now we're talking your perimeter how can you shore up that perimeter without making it look like a prison because that's a big concern if you go on we've we've talked about this before and, and put some videos in is that your to code front door if you've ever put in a doorknob or hinges or hung a door, yep. the screws are this long, they go into the trim. And if you want to freak yourself out right now, just go in Google or YouTube uh, home invasions. And a guy puts a boot to that door and the entire door frame lands in your living room. Yep. This is a big hole in your house. And we have this kind of false sense of security. Honey, did you lock the door? I did, right? Like that's somehow safe. It's not, not even a little bit. If you got glass next to your door, almost easier right so if you got that pane of glass where you can just bust it out reach around now in other countries they have if you've ever been to another country where they have a key and you lock the deadbolt they pull it out and they put it in the change dish over here by the yep. keys and all that yep. stuff fire code says we can't do that because you don't burn up trying to get out of your door not you get out a different way but i get it so that's what they say that latch for your deadbolt is one reach away Yep. So you pop that glass out, reach around, and you're in that house in seconds. So something to consider. But minus the window, let's go back to those little those little screws. On right the hinge now, side. On, the, on both. The on hinge both side, side, on the deadbolt side, on every place you see a screw. On the striker plate. Probably. Striker plate, all that. Take out your drill and just pull out that screw one at a time. Don't take them all out. The door's going to fall on you. Okay? <laughs> take out one and put in a three-inch deck screw and do it every single screw so why a deck screw deck screws are stronger okay. stronger than and drywall would be fine but they're they're steel screws they cost nothing right just get a box of them you probably got some in your garage anyway and just replace them what happens now when you kick that door you see the entire wall flex it's grabbing two by fours and you're trying to tear down a wall so you're going to get many many kicks and just the numbers say you say wouldn't it be easier to come in the sliding glass door it would but most people enter through the front door no why they just don't they, they just try to kick in the front door crazy whatever uh but then i would say also address those other weaker spots right so on your doors that's something easy you can do for 12 dollars worth of screws just pull them out put them back in yep. and if you do have that kind of glass and in those windows and all that kind of stuff and you want that ambient light i get it but consider some kind of window treatment. Now, most people, most the data says that most people are going to crawl up, you know, into a window. Have you ever tried crawling a window? And not because I'm a creeper, because I was a seal. When you're trying to crawl in a window, it, it's not, not easy, <laughs> right? It's like those windows that are up higher, if it's ground level and they could walk in, you need to do something with that window yeah. to make it more secure. But if it's up higher, you know, people aren't like gymnasts and they're not ninjas and they're not whatever. You bust a glass. I know many guys that have been cut up getting into windows on the seal teams, right? Heavy gloves do all that stuff because you're gonna tear yourself up so most people come through doors so something to consider so the windows that 3m film there's many products that are yeah. that are similar but that kind of film as long i got it man i say this just say it, don't blow them in the face as long as it's installed properly that must be glued with a special type of caulk to the frame if it's not google it right now and check out the capital 
when they beat the paint with a piece of, not even strong wood, they just hit it a few times and the whole thing fell out. And then they came into the Capitol building. Wow. That was not installed properly. That product is made to withstand much more uh, force as long as it's caulked in securely. And most schools right now in Douglas County, they are not installed correctly. It's just done wrong. They just put it to the edge and cut it with an exacto. They just put it on there and then move on to the next one, right? So if you grab it with your fingernail, you'll feel it. But what's connecting it is nothing but nothing. glass. When you break it, the whole thing comes out, right? So it's going to be very easy to get in and, and break through that. So it, but it's something to consider. But if you put it in properly and somebody's bashing and then their 25th bash they get in, they see you standing there with a firearm, right? That works, Yep. But if they bust through in three strikes and they're standing in there while you're scrambling to find the kids, that doesn't work, right? So we need to have, again, I just need a little bit of time to assume a posture in front of my children. Yep. That's, that's what I'm protecting. Buy some time. Right, buy some time to assume a posture. Okay, so that's doors and windows. Let's come into number four, safes and lock boxes. Now, safes and lock boxes, a lot of guys have safes. That old school, oh, dang it, I passed it. Let's What's go over again, right? It's got to be fast. Like it's, a, you know, one thing to secure. If you're securing your stash of all these firearms and family heirlooms, okay, you don't need to be quick in there. But if you have a safe, that type of safe, and it doesn't have any kind of quick access, I highly recommend a lock box. Lock boxes should um, have quick access for you. And deny access for those that have no business yep. being in towards your gun, right? So place throughout the house. My, one of my favorites, you know this forever, for a long time, has been Fast One Safes. F-A-S, the number one, safes.com. They're thick, solid steel. They've got a, they're not electric. So electric, no batteries. Just, calm guy, electronics, water seal. I just don't trust them, right? So this has a kind of a cipher lock like you'd see on, on a government door. Yep. You actually memorize the pattern, the pattern more than the numbers, right? So if you went high, low, middle, then high, low, middle becomes the, the thing for everyone in the house. And in seconds, that thing's going to work. And in 10 years, it's going to work. It gets a little moist, it's going to work. It's not going to forget. It's not going to run out of batteries. It's just going to work because it's a mechanical lock. There's a hydraulic that pops open and a loaded gun could be in there, right? Maybe condition two, pull it out, rack it. Just because I have children, it's just an extra feel good for Jimmy Graham, right? I don't want to be so scared. I make it dangerous and lose one of my kids because I'm paranoid, right? But it should be uh, responsible. So being able to access the, that thing, rack one in the chamber, I would say, uh, and that's the next one, we go from safes to fast lock boxes. Like I said, they have some with RFID, like rings and bracelets and all that kind of stuff. But again, electronics. It, yeah, I've got a box of that garbage. Yeah, it's in the trash now that I bought was fast years ago. And now it's garbage. It yeah. doesn't work. And something glitched out and ended up in the garbage, right? The ones that I've bought that are mechanical, I still use them to this day. The one right next to my bed's been there for years. Um, so that leads into number five, proper firearms with a mounted light to defend yourself and family. Mounted light, you need target ID. And if it's at night, you do not shoot until you can identify where those rounds are going because you're responsible for them. There's no such thing as reflex shooting. There's no such thing as impulse shooting, not if you're a good guy. If you're a murderer, you can reflex shoot anything that moves. Yeah. If you're a good guy, the cost of being a good guy is a half-second assessment as you get target ID. So it's very easy to mount, and you're not trying to hide it in a home defense firearm. It's optional. There's pros and cons if you're carrying it every day. We now have a system that carries inside the waistband uh, mounted light yep. on a 48. It's a TLR seven, I think maybe compact yep. on the 48 MOS. So it's fantastic so that we can now wear that cause it's not too bulky, but in a house, the safe's holding it, pull it out mm -hmm. and have that kind of functionality with that light already mounted. You're going to, you're going to want that cause you need that target ID to keep your family safe. Um, and one tip I did here, if you're going to have, let's say <laughs> a, a flashlight on the front of yep. the weapon, on your birthday, change that battery every year. Just get in the habit, yep. right? Because it's great that the safe is not automatic, yep. but that, that battery will eventually wear out. Yeah, and that's an excellent point. We say September, right? September. It's preparedness month. National preparedness month. It's so, like yeah. A podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of them. All of them. And wait, I think I remember somebody didn't do this. Am I hearing this correctly? No, you were misinformed. Because uh, <laughs> so I, I feel like somebody was crawling around in the middle of the night with a beep. So I, I checked with my source, and it turns <laughs> out that uh, the fire alarms have about a seven-year lifespan, and this one had reached seven years and Which died. Which you also check in September. Rolled over. Yep. <laughs> but it died two years before its expiration date. Oh, okay. No, there you go. So you got a buffer. You got a, It was within the, uh, the So buffer. I swapped it out, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Or, or my source swapped You're it so, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy, this friend of yours. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no worries. It's funny, because a Navy SEAL on the East Coast hit me up. 
after that, like a month or two after that, and he goes, I'm not even kidding. I was the guy, I heard your podcast. <laughs> and I was like, what a great point. And two, two months later, he's at three in the morning, he's crawling around on a, on a folding chair next to the stairs, mm-hmm. right? Trying to switch out batteries. So every September, check those batteries on all that stuff. Go to your car, check out your car, do prep your car, do all that kind of stuff. So anyways, that's the, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Proper firearms. So you've heard the shotgun stuff, right? And I'm, I'm, I love shotguns and people think I'm in a shotgun. I'm just not. But when, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm a trainer. I've been a trainer for a long time. And I've heard too many times these fallacies, these things that your uncle says like, hey, honey, take a shotgun and all you need to do is rack it and the dude's going to run out. Bad guys are going to run out of the house. And I go, unless he showed up with a loaded gun. Yep. Like if you're racking a shotgun, it means you weren't loaded. And when you racked it, you gave away your position and he could shoot you, right? The other thing is that shotguns, though you can't argue the firepower, you just can't. But most people don't understand them. They don't understand patterns. And when you fire, buckshot actually grows at distance. And you need to be very disciplined and train with them a lot to understand offset shooting. Uh, I've been to surgical shotgun classes. And if you don't put the time in, way more time than you need for a pistol or uh, rifle, you need to understand what that's doing and that at different distances it changes. So when you're half awake and it's low light and you pull out this shotgun and you don't train with it because it hurts because you're shooting it wrong, all these things factor to you just shot your kid. I, I aimed at this guy, but then that pattern grew and I caught my kid in the cheek or something like that. And some of this double up buck would be the same as a nine mil round. Well, in most, I would say a standard issue shotgun's 12 gauge. That packs a thump. Oh, yeah. If you, you know, a nine millimeter pistol, yeah, yeah. it has a little kick, but not like a 12 gauge. Yeah. And then so the other thing is. picks that up. Oh, yeah. Hang on, and, and, and um, you know, people, some of these people have a full on defense shotgun or a bird gun. Yeah. Um, and again, I can't argue the horsepower once you know how to use it and you understand that even techniques to take the recoil out of it, you know, whatever, all that exists, but most people simply don't know that. I think another challenge, uh, going to grandpa's story with the shotgun next to the bed, that's not a really good safe way to store a weapon. It's not, it's not. And well, so, so many things about that, but they, they, uh, that type of firearm, pulling that thing out, walking through the house like this with thing that's, you know, um, long as you are tall, it's just, it, it's not well, for if you have a corner and your barrel's yeah. two feet in front of you. <laughs> right. And you give where you're Here I am. <laughs> um, a lot of people that train, train with pistols and rifles. Yeah. Uh, pistols vary, you know, as far as dexterity. If you were in some kind of close quarter situation, that's what I'm going to grab next to my bed. Now, if I got to go out the yard and down the block, then maybe the AR is an option. But in the home, I'm going to grab what I have. It. That, that nine mils, like an extension of my arm because I use it all the time. I'm very familiar with it. I can strike with it. I can move with it. I can, all this stuff and with a mounted light. Anyways, just know that any of this stuff we're talking about requires training and understanding that the, the, you don't want to learn about buckshot spread after the fact, no. after you made a mistake. So just understand and know what you're using. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get emails from shotgun guys, but you guys can learn too. Um, <laughs> proper firearms. Okay. With a mounted light to defend your family, uh, emergency medical. Oh, one thing on the, on, the, on, the, on the rounds, I have shot pretty much every round they make that says it won't go through drywall to protect your family. They all go through, and they would kill your kid. So do not trust pistol or shotgun pistol, or? the pistol rounds. Now, bird shot, they yeah. say, you know, it is going to have less energy, so you're just going to you know, blind your kid, but not, whatever. It just means that passive potential is a real thing. Some instructors teach, this 9 mil, you're going to shoot, and go through three houses. That's not true. That's a silly statement just due to gravity, the things that lose velocity and all that stuff, it will penetrate and you need to know passer potential to, to aim where your kid's room is and if it's possible and you need to know how to strike as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on with that that we talk about before. I know some people, they're like, well, I'm not going to use a pistol because some guy told me to go through three houses. I'm like, that's very unrealistic. In reality, if you get attacked, you're going to shoot. Yeah. And if you can know where your kids' rooms are, then you can mitigate that some, and then you may have to strike because of the, what we call passer potential. But you need to know that, incorporate that in your training. Um, okay, moving on. The, oh, no, that was my point. They have these rounds that say, in the house, make sure you use these so you don't kill somebody in the next room. Well, we've made walls to spec yep. and shot through them, and there's still so much energy they would take a life. So don't trust any of that stuff until you test it. We continue to test this stuff. I really can't even recommend one right now. If you know, send me it. I'll buy it and shoot it. But if I buy it, you better be right. Um, I, I, the, the piece I would go back to is it, it, you got a projectile moving thousands of feet per second or hundreds, who knows. Um, uniform, safe, and accurate. Yeah. So your training, of those three weapons we talked about, pistol, rifle, shotgun, you're probably going to cha- train more with a pistol. Mm-hmm. Nine millimeter ammo is more affordable. Recoil is more manageable. Be accurate. Yeah. Be consistent. Be repeatable. Um, and then you're not taking out your neighbor's house. Yeah. And, and truly, you, you, you kind of said it. 
one of the best things you can do to take energy out of that round is don't miss. Yeah. You know, and that, and that takes training. And a lot of people are going to talk, they're going to talk ballistics till they're blue in the face and they don't even know how to enter that room over there. Yeah. So there's, there's a sequence of knowing what you're doing. Um, emer- okay. Number six is emergency medical supplies. Now we're talking basics. We put, we, put, we pretty much classify that as tourniquets, wound packing supplies, chest seals. Yep. Right. So tourniquets in a big way, like uh, all my kids know how to use, not the little one, three, even not yet. Maybe next year, would. maybe next year when she's four, but all Happy the other birthday, kids <laughs> know how they love it. They come and help me teach and we throw on tourniquets and we do seconds. that. So if you needed to stop massive blood flow uh, loss, then they could on appendages very quickly. Yeah. The wound packing, we have the cubes and we come to check out the stop the bleed class to be able to pack that wound packing equipment in there. And it's uncomfortable because you're going inside the wound and laying pressure on it. And that's lessons learned from overseas and many wars and all this stuff. And it's coming back home. It's not new. People say, hey, the new TCCC, this has been around for 20 plus years. Uh, it just took a long time to, to get into the country and, and be, be accepted, right? And then kind of later in the game, they were saying that they were focusing on those areas, but unlike... Um, Overseas, back home, many people don't walk around body armor on, right? Yeah. So in, in these engagements back in the, uh, in the United States, uh, chest wounds. So a lot of chest wounds. So to be able to put on those seals to, to, to kind of mitigate tension pneumothorax, all yeah. that stuff. It just means they're very easy. Put a couple stickers on it and, yeah. and monitor it. You might save his life because air didn't enter a cavity where it wasn't supposed to be and then do damage in, in a nutshell. So there's a lot to that, but it's a basic class of only a couple hours. And in addition to the class, you know, asking, talking to instructors, I would say, come by Abel Shepherd. You can buy the the pre-made med kits, yeah. whether they're for your car or have a couple in the house, one on each floor. Um, it's a great place to start and very yeah. easy to add. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't think chest seals are in there, but, you know, 40 bucks on Amazon, you have a, a set on your That's right. door. You can always so. augment it. We wanted that thing to be affordable because the ones that we said one in your every vehicle and then one in your home, yeah. right? And uh, we want it to stay under 100 bucks because if you go to the good ones, they're like 500 bucks. Yeah. If you go to the cheap ones at Walmart, they're garbage. Like yeah. the Band-Aids are horrible. Everything's horrible. So we went with quality stuff, but we restricted it. It doesn't have chest seals. It have all the other stuff in there. Uh, and you can buy chest seals, like you said, on Amazon for not very cheap and augment it. Uh, but having something like a tourniquet handy, and I say to people, well, I was a Boy Scout. You can just take a stick and a cravat, and I go, go. Yep. And they're running around looking for a stick and a knife and a pen and, and their papa's handkerchief. It's like... Buy, buy a tourniquet for 12, 18 bucks, <laughs> you know, whatever. So if you, if you can stop bleeding, you may save a life. And if you can't, possibly not. So anybody can do that. And I did say come in, but Parker is doing the, the website, isn't he? Uh, we have a web store now. Yes. Shepherd.com, so you can order it off. Yeah, there. check it out. Uh, on, on number seven, I kind of combined this. I put know the law. So that, 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 that tip is to really know your local law. Please don't use this as your go-to because I'm not a lawyer. But, uh, but the Castle Doctrine, I'll talk about that briefly. Uh, Castle Doctrine, you have a right to defend. In Colorado, thank you for this at least because Colorado is a uh, kind of mess. But you have a right to defend yourself in your home, right? So somebody breaks into your house and then you're, they're a threat to you. Uh, you can defend your life. You don't have to retreat and all this other stuff uh, that some states have. Uh, but you need to know. Uh, certain things that people misunderstand or we hear things coming out in classes in your driveway, in your yard, outside of your home, in a detached garage, all this other stuff that doesn't fall under that castle doctrine. You need yeah. to understand this the inside threshold. your yeah. home, right? Everybody's like, yeah, and then you drag them in. You're not going to get away with that. So Linus, you need to do and it don't right. Don't shoot them as they're running out of exactly, your house. Exactly, <laughs> right? So we, and the way, you know, um, with the way we say it is like this, <clears throat> and this is, this is solid because I've tested it on many people, the, the DA, attorneys, cops, everything. We say it this way. What would happen if I didn't pull the trigger? And you had a half second, by the way. So you need to think about this way before. What would happen if I didn't pull the trigger? Your answer better be, I would die. My wife would die. Beat me half to death and maybe kill me, right? Uh, Arson. Well, arson, is it, somebody lights a Molotov cocktail, they're going to throw it at the house. Is it occupied? If yes, you may potentially shoot. If no, then you can't. This property or people, what are you defending? So these are fine line things to be the good guys. Sexual assault, yes. Kidnapping, yes. All these things saying, what would happen if I did not pull the trigger? I would be dead right now. That's the thing. If you honestly say that, then a jury of your peers are going to say, I would do the same thing. Didn't have a choice, right? Uh, You may walk free amongst us. Or you say the wrong answer and say, you need to live in jail. Society's better if you live in jail for a while, right? That's exactly what's going to happen. That's, it, you know, simplified, obviously. But you need to understand this because you enter into a game where you don't know the rules, right? If you don't know the law. And even when you do, as per your local, uh, your local laws, 
learn them, especially if you're going to, you know, have a firearm. Everybody should know this stuff that your rights to defend your life. Yeah. And I didn't say this two years ago, but I'll say it now. U.S. Law Shield, right? These I'll types of programs, yeah. I, you know I didn't promote these. They all called yeah. me. Yeah. They all called and I said, wouldn't waste my money. Then we hit 2020, 2021, 2022. Get it. U.S. and, and full disclosure, we get a, if you, if you put in Shepherd, the code uh, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D, Shepherd. If you put that in there, we do get credit, and I think they give us a little bit of money or something like that to promote their thing. You know, I never want to be like, hey, check it out, whatever. But I don't sell things I don't trust, yeah, and I don't promote in. things that I don't trust. Nothing here that we sell or promote, I it's been don't tested. Or we don't works. do it, right? Yep. So it just means this: um, you're going to enter a game that's vicious, and it's not what it was intended to be, and you don't know the rules. And if you can have somebody come in and be your pitch hitter, like. I'm going to shut up now and this dude's going to take over and he does this for a living. You're going to be better off. Yeah. So one of the things you need to protect you and your family is almost after the fact one before, during and after know the law. Then after the fact, shut your mouth and bring in the pros on your behalf. Cause that's the game you just entered. You didn't want to, you didn't choose to, you could be an absolute hero and be locked up. And now your family is less safe because you're not around anymore. So that's part of it. So I think it's a, uh, it's imperative. It's important that we talk about that stuff. So let me just uh, recap real quick. And then I've got a couple uh, honorable mentions. One is have a plan. Everybody needs to know it. Two is cameras and motion detectors to get basically that, you know, extend out that perimeter, uh, sorry, that concentric ring before they get to your perimeter. Uh, doors and windows, that's fortification. Let's, let's plus up the doors and the windows if we can. Safes and lock boxes. Remember, secure those things, but they need to be fast for you to get into them when you need them to defend your life. Better yet, have it on your body. It's on your body. That's going to be the best deal and, and know how to use all that stuff. The proper firearms with mounted lights to get target ID. Emergency medical supplies, that's the basics. That's tourniquets, wound packing, and chest seals. Again, know how to use them. And then know the law and then get some kind of deal. I think it's, is it 12 bucks, 13 bucks a month? I think mine is 15 a month. Okay. One five. Did you add anything or just the basic one? You know, I, the, the day I signed up for Able Shepherd training, yep. I did the online application. Okay. So I can't even remember. Yeah. So there's, there's ones that are more expensive, but we, 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 we kind of said, what's the best for our people? Not for yeah. Jimmy Graham. What's the best for our people? And that's where we landed. So it's not much. Yeah. It's Starbucks or two a week or something like that. And it's a wash anyway, but you're going to wish you had it afterwards. So, uh, finishing up, I got a, co I a couple things I need to mention. Again, we do this for a living and we get a lot of questions. So what about less lethal? What about tasers? What about pepper spray? What about bear spray? What about fire extinguishers? Man, I can't tell you enough that when you need a gun, a gun's all, it, it's going to, a firearm with appropriate training is going to be the best thing that says to get to my kids, you have to go through me. What if I'm a woman? Again, a firearm in the proper training to get to them, you got to go through me. We've seen, I've been in trainings where they have, do you know if you use pepper spray in your school, everybody gets some. If you pepper spray an intruder, and then- oh, and it's, it's in the air. It's in the air, it's gonna aerate, and all these kids have just been gassed, and they're gonna be bumping into the walls, and now you're gonna try to get them out while this guy's climbing. He's probably gonna come too quicker than the kids, and now you can't get them out. They're not outside and free, they're bumping into the walls and screaming their heads off, right? So this this is a chemical weapon, We got that's the way the military treated it anyways. You have to understand that. You have to understand what this does. You're gonna get some too, by the way. Well, let me ask you this. You did this as a professional, overseas, in a harsh environment. Mm -hmm. Of those six items you listed, did you use or carry any of those to protect a dignitary? Um, not at all. Um, again, like with, with the taser, these things are very, tasers, they have a place, right? Especially in law enforcement. They're, yeah, they're amazing. Office, yeah. we, I, I would add to shoot you, but I don't have to. So I'm going to light you up and you're going to do the funky chicken on the ground. You're going to wake up in jail, <laughs> right? That's great. That's awesome, right? It's saving, protecting police. And it is that, that, yeah. that, yeah. that's as designed, right? Uh, fire extinguishers, this whole better than nothing. A lot of times better than nothing means we're not going to do it right because it's better than nothing. So we're just going to do this. And again, psh, we just saw this. We were in Denver and we just left. And remember the guy that pepper sprayed and the guy shot him in the face through the pepper spray. Ooh. Killed him dead in Denver, right? Last summer. That's really all you need to see on that argument, right? Yeah. It's almost like a skit, but it's it's horrible because a man lost his life. But I spray you, you shoot me. Somebody wins and somebody loses. So when that happens and you've got these, I've been in schools where they did that. We ran a scenario. This teacher was scared and she's probably 100 feet away. She sprays and she goes, I would have got him. It's a it's water. It's a train runner. And the guy's boom, boom, boom. I'm like, okay, that you wouldn't have made it on that one. She goes, why? Well, got him first. I'm like, yours goes 30 feet. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he, his would reach you. You know his what I mean? goes 200 yards. And that's, that's just, and it's not an apples to apples uh, thing. 
And last but not least, we have the defend modules. So you've heard run, hide, fight. I'm sure you've heard yep. of this. Yep. Uh, born out of Texas, I think about seven, eight years ago, whatever. It was a good place to start. And if that's what you can remember, run, hide, fight, it's a good place to start. As long as you train, defend modules. We have we have um, an acrostic acronym. Uh, it's actually an acrostic called defend, D-E-F-E-N-D. It's defense, evacuate, fortify, emergency medical aid, notify others in your area, dial 911. Now we put the seven in order to help, you know, make the seven tips and all that. But that is what we use because you, if you don't understand, at least understand some training in those disciplines, you don't give your people the tools to be successful. Yep. So that's what we need to say that run, hide, fight was a good start, but it leaves out medical. It leaves out all this stuff and then do it. Not just run, hide, fight, ready, break. You need to understand what that looks like. So reality-based training, run through, it can be fun, run through it in your home, go through that list of seven and then look at those defend modules and say, what would we do if this house was on fire? And then say, show me. And if your kids don't know how to do it, it's your fault, right? If we don't have a game plan, it's because we never sat down and had a free conversation, right? And then if they mess it up, you don't get to jump down your throat. It's their fault. It's your fault anyways. They don't know it. Yes. It's actually your fault. So don't be yelling at them when they do it wrong. You teach them. And then you say, this is what excellence looks like, just like we do here. Yep. And yep. you need to display excellence. And once you've displayed excellence, I've done my job. Yep. So anyways, I think that's a huge thing. And I hope some people learn something. Anything, any final thoughts, brother? Anything with the uh, the Karch household that's strong or weak or something maybe we didn't cover? Numchucks? Numchucks. By the door? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I was trying to prepare myself for any any last comments, but uh, I've got a big smile on my face because I think this is very applicable to everybody. Yeah. Um, I would like to see it uh, almost be mobile, right? So yeah. if I leave the house and go to the office, what's the plan at the office? When yeah. I'm at mom and dad's house, what's the plan there? Yeah. Um, like you said, it's free conversation. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Use it, practice it, train for it. And if you need help, call us. Call us up. We're available. That's what we do. Cool. Awesome. And what is it? Spy game. A quote from spy game. <laughs> when did Noah build the flood? I build the, build the ark. When did Noah build the ark? Before it, before the flood. Right. So now feels like the calm before the storm. And like, again, I don't want to be that guy. That came out of my mouth yesterday. It kind of surprised me, and it just does feel like that. It means we're, there's some weird stuff going on. I don't like it. doesn't really freak me out. Um, I said it this way the other day. Um, that you should be anxious. If you're watching your, your nation be dismantled before your eyes, yeah. you're watching what's going on with our children, you're watching what's going on with our politics, you're watching what's going on with local elections and all that stuff, you should be anxious. Yeah. This is worth being anxious for. But there's, there are things that we can do, and we can model for others. But uh, when we talk about your family, it's personal. Right, so your home is your castle. Spend a couple minutes, figure some of this stuff out. You're gonna feel better doing it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. One more shout out to Able Nation. Thank you guys so much. Able-Nation.org. Hook up with the Sage Neil Pinkham and uh, see if we can help out. One thing I forgot to mention: scholarships. So some people don't have the money to put their security folks through training. We can help you out with scholarships as well. So uh, check us out on Facebook. Uh, learn more about the Able Shepherd program at ableshepherd.com. A B L E S H E P H E R D and protectorculture.com so you can check out the audio and, and the video. watch the video with Perry Saul. Do them both. Do them both. All right. God bless each and every one of you. Till we see you again, take care of one another.